You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. That means James McConey. Hello, mate. How are you, Piney? Are you all right? I'm okay. I'm good. Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine. Yes, uh, lots to um, keep eyes on across the weekend. Although I will say I haven't really paid too much attention to the Super Rugby weekend, although I know that your Chiefs had a good win last night. Yes, they did. They beat Moana Pacifica 68-12, I believe. I was there commentating for the ACC. And, I mean, it's another foregone conclusion. And unfortunately, this is my issue with Super Rugby. They're having one of those shortened weekends, so just four games. But all of them a bit lopsided. And I think if you're going to run a competition, you need to make sure that if you're having a shortened weekend, that all the games are box office. And I'm afraid... Blues versus Force and Chiefs versus Moana aren't that. No, they weren't, were they? And and as it turned out, it, much as you try and build a narrative, 50 points to three, the Blues beat the Force, 68-12 Chiefs over Moana Pacifica. Yeah, I, I mean, we all love contests and there just wasn't one. What, what's going on? I, don't, I just can't work Moana Pacifica out. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned about Moana Pacifica. I mean, I think I think the, that's... Is it Sansa that runs it? Is it... Still stands are right, even though there's no South Africa. But anyway, whoever runs it, when when America gets involved, they'll, they'll have to change it to anus, I guess. But anyway, that's another issue. But, but with um, Moana Pacifica, it just haven't really fired, and it, it, they feel a bit ill conceived. And I speak to, I've got friends in uh, Tongan rugby and Samoan rugby, and they would have liked to have sep- have had separate teams, and they claim they could have they could fill Mount Smart with Tongan fans if there was a Tongan Super Rugby side and vice versa with Samoa. So Moana Pacifica, I do worry. I don't think that it's great for some young talent to get identified. I mean, Miracle Fa'alangi, uh, Kyron Taumoi Falau, the, the Blenheim Bullet at fullback. I mean, there's, there's some good guys coming through, but I do wonder about the sustainability of Moana Pacifica. Mm. Let's stay in the Pacific Islands because uh, Selala Mapusua has been sacked as Manu Samoa's uh, national team coach, uh, replaced by Mahonri Schwalger. Uh, this hasn't gone down well in all quarters, has it? No, it hasn't. And um, uh, forgive me for following up one of my tweets, uh, Piney, if you still call it Twitter, but I saw Lima Sopawanga was a bit upset about it, and I stuck up for um, Maps, as they call him, Selala Mapusua, because I think he's a really great coach, and... Um, and I, I, I believe that they were one pass away from beating England at that World Cup, if you remember that late uh, breakout in that game. Yeah. And if they'd done that, it would have been one of the greatest victories, perhaps the greatest victory in Manu Samoa history. And they were very close to Ireland pre-World Cup as well. So, you know, I felt like he was on the right track. And I tweeted that. And then um, Lima Sopwanga came back and said, it's a disgrace, you know, sack the board pretty much. And, um, wow. and he extrapolated with Liam Napier and the Herald a really interesting interview. And, of course, that pretty much ends, I'd say, well, may end uh, Lima Sopawanga's international career of being that, um, uh, I guess, uh, vocal about it. So we'll wait and see. But I feel like Salala Mapasur was on the right track, and it's a real shame to, to cut him off just as he's doing something good. Speaking of doing good things, Warriors... They looked good, didn't they, uh, against Souths? Um, there's still a little bit of a few question marks over some of the officiating. I see Latrell Mitchell will face um, three to four weeks on the sideline, going on report twice in that game yesterday. What did you make of it all? Uh, Warriors, refereeing, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think the Warriors, the, the great thing, Piney, is that uh, just seeing the Warriors in control of a game against a, a big you know, a big team like the Rabbitohs over in Sydney, it's just, I just can't remember when that used to happen. I remember a few real, you know, sort of uh, barn burning, like nail biters, but this was just totally in control. Um, beautiful afternoon. Everyone just clicking. Uh, Roger Tuivas and Sheik looking great. So, I mean, I think that um, it was great to see. My issue with the weekend really was just seeing the refing, Jared Sutton um, in the next game, the Tigers game um, against... Uh, who was it? The Dolphins. He missed a really basic call, a marker out in front, which I felt like decided the, uh, pretty much decided the contest. And he's also the ref who missed Reese Walsh's um, forward pass, that shocking one last year. And I think Peter Volandis can go on all he likes about how great the NRL is, but there's a massive blind spot there with the refing. It's still pretty average.
Mm, indeed. Let's uh, go to basketball. March Madness. Now, Caitlin Clark uh, from the University of Iowa is the hottest thing going around. Well, it doesn't seem just women's basketball, but basketball in general. You can't get a ticket to see these games in March Madness. No, no, it's massive. I saw that in the game uh, that she played against LSU, the big rivalry. There was Jason Sudeikis, Ted Lasso in the crowd, celebrities all around. Suddenly they, they're Iowa fans, um, quite a small university. Um, but the Iowa Hawkeyes, that's Caitlin's team. She's six foot. She's uh, she's the Steph Curry of college, women's college basketball, shoots threes, amazing passing game, um, and also has kind of been able to make money. They've let student-athletes make money for the first time ever. Um, it's called Name, and Image, and Likeness, NIL. And so you can get sponsors. And so she's already made $5 million, which I'm pretty happy about because I think student-athletes should be allowed to make money because all these coaches are on $8 million or something ridiculous. And half these um, kids go back to their hometown and, you know, yeah, they've got a degree, but they've got um, nothing else to show for it, no money like the coaches anyway. So... I'm happy for that. But anyway, tomorrow morning, Piney, 7 a.m., um, it's, it's uh, Caitlin's Iowa team against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Um, so uh, appointment TV, I believe, on Sky. It'll be on ESPN. All right. And just to finish, um, Sam Whitelock has announced his retirement from all rugby uh, when the season with Poe ends. How will you remember Sam Whitelock? Just absolutely as one of the greats. Put him on the Mount Rushmore. He is that good, Sam Whitelock. And with along with Brady Retallick, I think probably the greatest locking combination in the history of the sport. So you could say Retallick might be, you know, a, a slightly better player, but I think maybe the way you you, you, fr- you frame it is you go Retallick might have had more influence on games, but Whitelock had more influence on results. And the reason why I say that, and you'll know this very well, Piney, it was the turnover against Ireland in that quarterfinal yes. last year, just epic. And if you remember back in the 2015 World Cup, the semi-final against the Springboks, he uh, won a line-out against the throw. And that was just that turned the game, and it was just a really big play. And, of course, his leadership and captaincy, amazing player. And, of course, announced it on Easter, which I thought was quite poignant because he's the player, I think, um, out of all the All Blacks who looks the most like Jesus. And um, I don't think he'll be making a comeback, though. Thank you, James. <laughs> Wonderful as always from you. James McConey, alternative commentary collective uh, across your social platforms and part of our Sundays here on News Talk ZB. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.